Joy friends, welcome to Yarn Joy Adventures number 14. My name is Cynthia with Cynthia's Joyful Creations. And normally you join me in the yarn studio, but I have a new place I want to show you. I first want to apologize for the fact that there was no Yarn Joy Adventure last week, but I'm getting ready to show you why. I've been really busy working on something for the last two weeks, so I haven't done a lot of crocheting, but I have been working a lot of overtime at the financial office and then trying to come home and work on this in the evenings before I just got too tired, but I am ready to finally show you. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to my new work studio. This is where I can come in and work on projects and do tutorials and I can just get up and leave the project um, in here uh, in, this, in the shape that I've left it in and be able to come right back and it's not in anyone's way. This was our nursery and our guest room. It still is our guest room because we still have a pull out sofa couch in here, but nonetheless, I'm excited about having this little work area. And without further ado, let me show you. All right, this is coming into the room. So this is a glance at it from the door. So I'm just gonna step on in and I'm gonna try and walk very slowly so as not to make anyone dizzy but when we first come into the door this is my china hutch and it is just waiting to go into one of the boys homes um pretty much it's going to andrews he's the only one who wanted any of the china in here well, i have three sets of china in there plus i have some decorative candles as you can see the pumpkin there are some boho bags that I'm working on that still need to uh, be finished. And then in this little footstool, I have all the sheets and blankets and bibs and stuff for any little people that come to visit. And then these are whips that I need to finish. So you will see those again very soon in a new adventure that I will be bringing to the channel. All right, moving over here, I have some things that I work on quite a bit and a lot of my crochet and knitting accessories and then my crochet uh, nylon threads are also in these little storage buckets. Over here you can see I have lots of towels to work on. As you know, I'm a big thing. I'm doing a big thing with crochet uh, removable towel toppers and dishcloths because I do sell them in the shop and in that red basket I have some that are ready to go to the shop and then down below on this card are all of my beads so my little bead station is down there and then just some little remnants of the nursery and then here is a table I originally bought this for the front porch but we weren't really using it a whole lot out there and it just makes a perfect uh, work table and tutorial table. And as you can see, I've got my camera and my yarn ball winder there. And then over here I have my laptop so that my camera will work for tutorials and any other thing that I need to do. May do some pop-up lives in here. And a desk. This desk my mom has had my entire life so I grew up with this desk and I'm so happy to really be able to finally institute it somewhere in my home and use it. And then over here I have all of my buttons and my amigurumi eyes and noses and I have all of the charms that I use for making stitch markers. All of that is in there. In the boxes, the blue boxes, those are, a good bit of them are still empty they will eventually hold whips or future uh, projects that I'd like to work on. Same thing with the boxes below, but they are currently empty at the moment and that's okay because I have room to expand if I need to. And in this cabinet here, this white cabinet, I have all of my fat quarter fabrics um, in them. So just to maybe help show you one. So you can see I've got some fat quarters in, in all of these. So I have a little place to store all the fat quarters. 
And then at the current moment, I don't really have anything in this cabinet. The only exception is the cards that I use when I'm giving away something as a gift or when I'm selling it and it has washing instructions. Um, it's kind of done up business-like. So this one, of course, is if someone has purchased something and it just tells them how to care for their crocheted or knitted item. All right. And then up here is all the stuff that I use for making my crocheted keychains. And then there's my pom-pom maker there. And then I have extra thread that doesn't fit on the spindles in the yarn studio. And then here is the couch. It does pull out into a sofa bed. And those are the two called the midwife blankets that I actually designed. And then these dolls here, the porcelain doll I bought my mom when I was in college. And then the other doll she gave me because it's actually newborn life size and it'll work great for uh, crochet doll clothes that I make that I'll be able to test them on that doll. And then currently right here, all of these are my current whips except this basket. It's just got a piece of fabric in it that I got from my mom. Uh, there's some stuff from Lisa Knits in Australia that we've got to yet get framed and put up on the wall in the yarn studio. A couple of my little whips I've got going on. And that red thing is a wagon that I use when I go back and forth to my craft shows and farmer's market. That blanket belongs to my marine son. It was one that was made for him by me when he was young, that's what started me onto crocheting, is that blanket right there. And then just some little knickknacks in here that I had. So, but that is the full look at my work area. And I'm absolutely loving it. I have a little coffee table in here and it does have extensions on both sides so that it can become a bigger table and then you know I love candles so I have to have some candles and this little plate says I can't read it through the camera live every moment with joy and laughter so and I have one over here under the mums that Mr. Joyful gave me for Valentine's Day. All right. Well, thank you for joining me for my little workspace. Hope you enjoyed this little tour and it was worth the wait for another Yarn Joy adventure. So before we wrap up this video, I do want to share with you a few things that I have been able to finally get completed this weekend. <sighs> It felt so good to finally be able to do something crochet wise because as I shared earlier, I haven't done a whole lot over the last two weeks. Um, but first I want to show you a finished object that I finally have gotten done and it's only taken me about four years to do. So about four years ago before I had my surgery, um, I had crocheted a fall scarf. And as you can see, it has a uh, brown here at the top. And then this is a uh, kind of olive green. And if I probably hold it out from the other colors, you can see it a little bit better. And then like a golden yellow, a burgundy, and a gray. And then it goes into the orange. And then it repeats the brown, the green, the yellow, the burgundy, the, the gray the orange, and then the brown. But anyway, and if I'm correct, this was like a brick stitch that I used to create that scarf. And so I made a matching hat to go with it, but the only hat I got done was Mr. Joyful's. So I was creating the scarf and a beanie hat for myself and then a beanie hat to match for him. And so 
this is what I had gotten done before um, I had surgery. And this was his hat. And there's the gray and the brown, the orange, the burgundy, the yellow, and then the green for the brim. So the same colors that were in the scarf. So the last thing I needed to do was finish up a beanie for myself. So I did. I created a whole nother one. So let me show you the two together. So the one on the bottom is Mr. Joyful's and the one on the top is supposed to be mine. However, try as I might, <laughs> this hat is not going to be for me unless I'm cousin it. <laughs> so, so it was way too big. So as I was on my play dates today, I made a whole nother one. And this is it. So in the end, I will put this one to sell. And of course, here is Mr. Joyful's. And that's the one that's too big. And then here is mine. And as you can see, they kind of look very similar. The only difference is on this one here, the gray is a little bit wider on the top than it is on this one. Well, unfortunately, this one is also too big for me. And what's even sadder is on this one here, I did five increased rounds on the top, okay? And so I knew that that was just going to be too big, so I had to decrease. So this one, I ended up doing four rounds on the top in the attempts to get it uh, for, you know, the right size for me, which I'm going to be honest with you, I think this one looks a lot more masculine so it's probably a good thing that this one fits Todd perfectly. And even though this one that was intentionally made for him fits him very well also, out of the three, it is a much better fit for me. So... This one will be mine, the original hat <laughs> that was designed for Todd. And then the very last one that I made will be his. And as you can see, they're kind of very similar. So probably works out for the best that that is the set that we'll have. And then again, this one here, I will put in either a farmer's market or Oktoberfest or uh, shopper's walk next year. So anyway so that is that finished object done off the plate <laughs> is no longer a whip it is an fo all right the last time we were together i showed you some towel some removable towel toppers that i have been working on for two commission projects and some dish towels um, tonight i'm going to show you one of the commission orders completed with buttons and all and then later this week in the next Yarn Joy Adventures, you'll see the other commission one because I promised them I'd have it done by Wednesday. And that particular order, um, they just asked for it sometime mid-March, late March. So I'm actually not running late on theirs. This one here, um, they have kind of been a little bit waiting for it, but nonetheless, um, they are okay with getting it tomorrow. So let me get these shown to you. So the first one is this towel here and I have just put on it a really cool white button and I'm gonna come close so you can see the ridges in that button and hopefully that's focused in pretty good for you. But that is the towel topper there and this is the dishcloth to go with it. So really, really pretty set. And since you've seen the towel toppers and the dishcloths before, I'm going to try to move as fast as I can so I'm not detaining you too long. But here is another towel. This is a beige towel. Hopefully you can see that that is beige. And then look at these colors on it. 
Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. And then I just did a little wooden button for that one. But love how that turned out. And here is the dishcloth with it. So really gorgeous, gorgeous set. I absolutely love this yarn. And going forward, I will be a lot better about keeping the ball bands with them until I've shown you. So I can tell you um, what yarn it is. Of course, all of this is cotton yarn, but the brand and the color name. All right, the next towel is kind of an off beige cream towel. And then this is the tower topper for it. It has a little bit of red, gray, blue, and green in it. And so I just used a green button for this one. But that is really, really pretty. And then here is the dishcloth to go with it. So love that set. Very, very excited for this young lady to get to get these. They're all for herself. She just moved into a house. So some of it is commissioned and some of it is a um, housewarming gift from Todd and I. All right, this is the next towel. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I did this garnet towel topper and then just put a clear white button on that. And then here is the dishcloth to go with it. So love it, love it, love it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And you can see it pulls out the colors in that towel. All right. And then the next one for her is this home towel. And you can see it's got some gray in it. Uh, it's actually a very light gray, but it's coming across kind of dark. And then the beige and then this light gray here. Oh, excuse me, that is a dark gray. This is the light gray and this is the brown, the beige that matches the beige down here. And so I did a little kind of taupe uh, color with it and then just put this kind of really dark brown button on it. And you can see it's got a little bit of 3D texture to that button so love it and then here is the towel top i mean excuse me the dishcloth to go with it again the last yarn joy adventures i showed these towels uh the toppers and the dishcloths up close uh you just didn't see it the towels that were going with each and then them completed with buttons love this set is really fun and festive um, it's it's mainly a yellow base, but it has all kinds of colors in it, like hot pink, purple, green, uh, like a, a neon green, turquoise, um, a little bit of kind of, it's not really orange, it's more like a salmon color, but really, really cute and festive. And again, it's with one of those off-white beige towels, and then here is the dishcloth to go with that. Love those colors. Very fun. And the next set. Love this towel. It's a really, really thick towel. Um, but it's got lemons on it. And of course, I used a sage green color to kind of pull out some of the sage in the lemons. Um, they match even more. But the lighting is not really showing you. I guess there you can kind of see more of the sage colors in the leaves. But on this one, I put a yellow button so that it helps to kind of pull out some of the yellow in the towel. And then this is the dishcloth that goes with it. And the final towel set, um, she asked me if I'd ever done... Um, excuse me, she didn't ask me. Someone else asked me if I had ever done one with like a ring. And I have before, but I personally don't really like them. But I thought since, you know, I was trying to give her kind of a variety, I would do one for her and just see how she likes it. So I'll be curious to get her opinion. But anyway, 
This is why I don't like them because the towel, got a piece of lint, actually a piece of thread, but it bunches the towel up on the, when you use a ring, it just bunches it up so much here and it's really hard to flare it out. So that's why I personally am not a huge fan of it like that. Well, the back here looks a lot better than the front. All right, I might have helped improve that a little bit, but anyway, that's how this one hangs. And then, of course, to go with the purple, I put a really festive color button that kind of matches all the colors down here. And here is the dishcloth with this one. Now, I've not shown this set at all, so I am gonna go ahead and open up the dishcloth but it's just a purple one with that kind of rainbow color going around the edge that matches the ring. And for this one, it's been a while since I've done a pot holder like this, but I decided to do, um, since I had a little bit of the yarn left over, uh, I decided to make a bloomer pot holder for her. Um, so let me put this set down and hold this up. So here is the pot holder. It is double-sided, so it is thick. So you can see there's no ruffles on that side, but there are ruffles on this side. And then a little hanging piece that it can hang if she chooses to have it hang. If not, then it's just cute. But anyway, so nice little pot holder to go with that one. And then the last thing um, that I want to share with you is uh, even though Christmas has passed, I wanted to give her options, you know, throughout the year. And um, what better way to also help sell and advertise if you allow someone to have something to sample. So I made her some in Christmas colors and she can alternate some of the other ones that are on the off-white towels and use them. Um, and uh, she can use the towels uh, with these or with the set that's on them. But here is one of the Christmas sets and I just used a big old green button to kind of pull out the green. And then of course, this is the dishcloth with it. Absolutely love the little open window kind of look to it there. And so she's got that set that's interchangeable with one of them. And then this was the other Christmas set that I made her. And of course I used a red button on that to kind of play on with the red. And there is the dishcloth to go with it. So that gives her two little Christmas sets uh, for Christmas 2024. And then the final thing she's gonna get is um, some scrubby yarn. I took some cotton yarn and some scrubby yarn and crocheted them together. And so this is a scrubby dishcloth. And then I did one more with some white scrubby yarn and some pink cotton. And I love this. And right here, it looks like it's just the cotton, but when I turn it a little bit, you can see that scrubby yarn coming through there. But really, really pretty. So. So that is what I have been able to get completed this weekend. I am so excited now that the workshop studio is complete and set up what I am going to be able to get done this week. So stay tuned, join me next week, and I'll show you what I get done. And don't forget, Yarn Joy Adventures is not just about, you know, my finished objects. I would love to be able to share your finished objects. So if you have something you'd like to share or, you know, uh, yeah, if you'd like to share, then uh, be sure and email me a picture of those objects and I will definitely get them included in this video. All right, it's getting really, really late. I'm stumbling through my words, time for bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this so I can get it out to you guys um, so you don't go another week without an adventure from me. But until next time, be joyful, stay crafty in your own way, make your own joyful creations, and above everything else, remember, you are love. And I love you. Mwah. Nugs and joy. And if you want a real treat, stay around because bloopers are next. Is it recording?
recording? <laughs> it is recording. So, without further ado, I would like to... That didn't sound right. Let's start again. Hello, Joy friends. I just want to show you what I've been working on and why I have not been crocheting a lot and explain why there was not a Yarn Joy adventure last week. Um, and 